All right, all right, all right. So we are about to do a recap of the show of Life After Lockup. And oh my gosh, I did not see the stuff coming that happened last night in the episode. But I was kind of upset I didn't get to see DeMarc and Quaylen fight. So let's start off talking about John Miller, the one who's with Christiana Roth. He goes to visit his friend Carrie, who's cleaning up after a ceremony. Carrie's the Indian friend of John that helped John build that little wedding setup in John's truck. John went over to Carrie's house to seek advice about his weird relationship with Christiana's sister Tara. John told Carrie that Tara had been coming on to him a lot, and his friend asked him what he was doing about it, where John replied, nothing, and to tell the truth, I kind of like it. Then John turned around and told producers that he felt very guilty about these lustful temptations but Iowa doesn't offer conjugal visits for him and Christiana. His friend Carrie said you're married to her sister while turning around and telling producers that he has seen John go through similar situations like this in the past and it's never been a pretty sight. This whole thing could blow up in John's face in a heartbeat. All he has to do is make one bad decision. And his friend asked him, what do you think is causing all this flirtation? You're not inviting any of this? And John said, well, you know, we mess around, we joke around, and I'm always stealing her phone and stuff. And maybe the feelings just somehow got all mumbled, jumbled up in there. And I can't say I haven't thought about it. Which Carrie clapped back and said, well, you're feeding that flirtation. And if you continue to keep doing that, you're going to end up in her. John said, to throw everything away for 30 seconds of pleasure is stupid. So does that mean he only lasts 30 seconds? I don't get that. And his friend went on to remind him that he was thinking with the wrong head and that gets him in trouble every time. And this was the craziest part. Producers asked John if there's ever been anyone he's cheated on, which he replied, there's not one person that I have not cheated on. So that means John's already cheated on Christiana, and I bet it's with her sister. So John said since the almost kissing incident that him and Tara have said nothing but a few words to each other, and then Christiana called John and said, I got some good news, baby. And he said, what's that? And she said, I get out in two days instead of three weeks. And I don't have to go to the halfway house. I get to come straight home to you. But there's one catch. Tara can't be there because I can't live with anybody that has pending charges. So John had to take Tara and her mother out to the back porch of his home and tell them the news that Tara had to move out. Tara's mom said, you can't buy her efficiency or anything. And John said, no. And John says, I feel bad, but it's the only way that Christiana can come home. The mother was upset. It's like one comes in and one has to go out. And I don't want Tara to go out using again. And Tara goes, what am I going to do? Where am I going to go? And John says, I don't know. And Tara said that she felt like John was just making this up to kick her out. And John even told producers, I'm kind of glad she's moving out because this will prolong Christiana finding out about us. And Tara said that I'm going to tell Christiana about what happened between me and John. She's just doing that so Christiana will get mad and she can move back in. That's what she's hoping for, that Christiana will get mad and move out. Next, there is Lacey and Shane. Shane says he still hasn't got over the fact that Lacey did not tell him that John was out of jail. And that he was very paranoid that John was going to show up at their house because Lacey said she had to get a protective order on John in the past because he would get all drunk and inebriated and show up at the house. And she's like, if John wants to find me, he knows where I live. So Shane was changing the code to the door. And Lacey's like, I don't understand why you're doing this. Is this because John's out? And Lacey said the only person that knew the code to the door was her, her dad, and Shane. And John went to go meet up with Lacey's friend Miranda at a lake in Virginia Beach, Virginia to try to get more information on Lacey. Miranda said the only reason she was there was because they have history and they've known each other for some time and that she felt that he deserved to know what was going on. And so John said, so what's going on? And she continued to tell him that Lacey was pregnant with Shane's baby and John was heartbroken. And he went on to talk about Lacey was pregnant with his kid before, but she had a miscarriage. And he said he's still not done with Lacey, though. Next, we have Lindsay and Scott. So Scott asked Lindsay to leave after she destroyed his desk and tore his office apart. And Lindsay replied, 
you. So Scott said he was just going to write it out because he said he didn't see Lindsay staying out of prison for yet another month. Because traditionally people who come out of prison and go back by doing the exact same thing that put them there in the first place. Of course, it didn't even take two more weeks and Lindsay went to jail. If you haven't seen my other video about Lindsay, there's more details in there. There. But, yeah, she wasn't even out of prison for a total of seven weeks before she went right back. So, she was talking to producers on the phone. They're like, do you, want, do you have anything you want to say to Miley Grace? And she's like, I'm sorry. We've been through this again. We'll make it through this time. And I promise mom will be better when I get out. But I'm not sure she will because she her attitude still ain't changed. Because then she turned around and they asked if she had a message to say to Scott. Lindsay pretty much was like, F you, Scott. I'd rather have a root canal and a pap smear at the same time than talk to you ever again. If you wonder why you're 52 years old and still single, this is why. And Scott hung up the phone. I'm pretty sure that's the last we're going to see of them since she's locked back up. They really stretch their short time together on this show. So next, Quaylen and Chevelle. Oh my gosh, I did not see this one coming. So we all know Quaylen surprised Chevelle and Branson while she was visiting there with her daughter and DMR. Quaylen and Chevelle decided to take a Ferris wheel ride where Chevelle said that she wasn't willing to try again unless he's willing to give her full commitment. While going on about it, he got down on one knee and asked the weirdest proposal I have ever heard in my life. He said, you want your commitment? Well, here you go. And Chevelle was shocked. But then she got all giddy. And he said, will you marry me? She said, yes. She started crying. And then she's like, we always conquer in the end. We always conquer. And then Quaylen goes, tell d -Mark that. And can we just take a minute to appreciate this fine specimen right here? Like, oh my god. So, Brittany and Marcelino, their family, and Brittany's mom traveled to Anchorage, Alaska, so Brittany's mom can go face-to-face -face with the creator of a majority of her childhood trauma, her mother, Jackie. So, Brittany, Cynthia's mom, started crying, said that growing up wasn't all that great, and part of taking this trip to see her was to talk to her about all that. And Cynthia said she started drinking and using alcohol when she was 13 to numb all the pain and stuff that was going on and that drugs and alcohol was all she knew and she just needed her mother Jackie to acknowledge that so she could begin healing and her mother Jackie said I didn't stick a pipe in your mouth I didn't stick a drink in your hand it's not my fault it's not my fault you ran away all the time where Cynthia got mad and she stormed out the door and started crying which I understand I would feel the same way they said that her mother, Jackie, used to be a crack addict and still hasn't changed. The only thing is, she's lonely now. Yeah. Well, that's all the couples, except Andrea and Lamar. They went to go hash things out with Shantae. I don't feel like explaining it all. Go check out my video before this about the spoiler for the Life After Lockup show. And it has the full story about Andrea and Lamar going to see Shantae and exactly what happened. They didn't have no new additions to the show last night, so go check that out in my last video thank you for checking out my video and thank you to all my new subscribers i love you all so much and i appreciate all the love you guys are showing me you're the best all right have a good day deuces